All right, let's talk about comparisons with generic um, data structures, generic objects. So if I have some code, here's a little piece of Java code for you. Okay, one is hello world, two is hello world. If they're equal, we're going to print out that they are the same. Okay, it's pretty simple Java code. Where is this equals method? It's in the object class. Is it in the object class? Is it? Okay. So if I have two objects, let's just say I cast these two things. So it's just going to cast them as objects and say, Okay, so we're really doing these as objects. How does equals compare to objects? It compares the memory address, absolutely. How does string compare to objects? So these don't have the same memory address, right? But it, it would say this would be true, right? Okay, so if object is comparing memory addresses and string is not comparing memory addresses, when I say whether two strings are equal, where is this equals method? It's in the string class. It's in the string class. It overrides the object dot equals, okay? But it is not the object equals, it overrides it. Absolutely. So the, the problem that we run into is that if we're building a data structure and we have, we allow people to use our data structure because we're nice and generous people. And let's say somebody comes along and they create a class of monkeys. Monkeys are my favorite class just because they're fun. Okay. So we create a class of monkeys. Now, if we're allowing them to use our data structure and we want to know whether We've got two different monkeys, and we want to know if they're equal the same way. We have no way of knowing, because we're writing the data structure, right? We have no way of knowing whether this equals class is in the monkey class or is in the object class. And we will always get a response to this question, if m dot equals n. It may not be the correct response, because just like we saw with strings, if the person that wrote the monkey class has not overridden the equals, then we're going to use the objects equals. Okay. 
And object equals is not the same as string equals. And it's not the same as monkey equals. And so the problem here is that we have no way of knowing with the equals whether the monkey class has overridden the equals. And so we want to have a mechanism that requires that requires that we've overridden the, the equals method or the method that we're going to use. And since we're going to do that, we can actually extend a little bit that comparison. Because we, we rarely, occasionally we want to know whether two things are equal. We often want to know whether one thing is bigger than the other. Okay. So in addition to the equals that's in the object class, there's another way that we can make people um, tell us whether two things are equal. And it's called the comparable interface. Okay. The comparable interface only has one method. That method has a signature public int compare to and then another kind of object of the same type. That's it. That's the only method that you need to implement the comparable interface. And so if we call for example, a dot compare to b. If a is less than b, we'll return less than zero. If a is equal to b, we return zero. And if a is greater than b, we return more than zero. Okay, that's the rules. So if we're creating a piece of data to go in our, in our data structure, for example, if we're writing a monkey class, all we have to do is say that we're implementing the comparable interface and provide a method public int compare to object. And all that has to do is agree that whatever you want to know, if one object is bigger or smaller than the other, will either return less than zero, zero, or greater than zero. So now, as the designer of a data structure, if I want to know whether one kind of monkey is bigger than another kind of monkey, or if one kind of monkey is equal to another kind of monkey, or one kind of string is equal to another kind of string, or if I want to sort my strings, I can call the compare to method. When we deal with things like sorting strings, there's a bunch of different ways you can sort strings. You can sort them lexicographically, so A through Z. You can do a case-sensitive sort or case-insensitive sort. When I'm designing my data structure, I don't care about that. What I care about is you having a method that has compare to that just tells me whether something's bigger than something else. That's not my problem. I am just agreeing to design the data structure your data is coming in my data structure. You have to do what I want. So in the data itself, then we have to put the compare to method. And in our data structure, we just have to take that piece of data and say, we're going to use the comparables compare to method and we're going to compare two different things and we're going to find out whether they're the same or different. And so the syntax that we use for that is something like this. 
So if, and then we have a cast, For data dot compare to object is equal to zero, then they are the same. So what we're doing here is we're taking data, and we'll see on Tuesday where that data comes from, and we're casting it to comparable. So this means that when we call, when we call the compare to interface, sorry, the compare to method, it is the compare to method that relates to this comparable here. So we take data, we cast it to comparable, we call the compare to method, and we're calling that compare to method, and we're providing it with another instance of something that's the same as data. Okay. And if they're the same, it returns zero. If one's greater than the other, it will return greater than one, or greater than zero, and if one's less than the other, it will return less than zero. So it's if we have three open brackets, comparable, and then in angle we have our T or our E, one closed bracket, data, closed bracket, dot compare to, and then the object that we compare to is equal to zero, they're the same. So we're going to use this in the linked list that I talked about. Can you guys remember which linked list method we're probably going to use this in? It was a while ago. So there's a contains method, okay? And so we're going to contains. The contains method has the sub the signature public boolean contains e object. So our contains method in our linked list is going to, this is the object that we're comparing to. This will be our data in our node in our linked list, and we'll talk more about that on Tuesday. And so if it's zero, then we have it. 